So hello everyone, I'm Anna Sansom and I wrote a book called Desire Lines, which is all about following our unique paths of sexuality and sexual expression. In other words, rather than feeling that we have to reflect back what we've been shown in the media or what society's taught us, we actually get to choose our own paths around desire and around our sexual expression. And I really wanted to create a space to have some conversations with other people about this, which is why we're here. And today <laughs> I'm thrilled to get to spend some time with the lovely Sue Sutherland. Um, Sue is a body worker, a guide, an activist, a writer, and an educator, amongst many other things, who is fascinated by sexuality, gender, consent, and relationships. Mm. And Sue's motto is permission to feel what you are feeling. And I have to say, the first time I heard that, I got body shivers because I know that's something I personally have struggled with, even though it feels like, feels like such a fundamental part of being who we are. So without further ado, Sue, I would love to welcome you and just give you an opportunity to say a little bit about who you are and um, what a bit more about what you do, please. Wow. How do I follow that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Who am I? It changes who I am, but I think the core of what I'm focused on right now is shame, trauma, and the unspoken things that are within us all and how safe it is to speak those and what can happen. What can happen if we do in the, I don't want to say the right company because I'm not really a binary, good, bad, right, wrong person, but what happens if we can speak our truth in company that welcomes that? Wow. I mean, I mean, yeah, and just, and really being able to notice what happens in our body. Like I know right now, even just saying those words, I've got goosebumps all over my skin. And I think being able, you know, a lot of people think when you, they hear somebody's a body worker that they, they do things to bodies and it's like, that can happen, but actually, I think of myself as somebody who works with bodies. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean to say I have to touch a body, but I'm very much body focused. Um, and it was interesting, like hearing the word guide. Um, we were having a conversation just before we started about that, you know, what are the identities that we have? Because my identities change all the time. But, and I was like, I don't really feel comfortable with coach. Which I hear a lot of people because coach is, is specifically asking questions. And I love asking questions. I love asking questions that are not typically asked. Mm -hmm. But I really like sharing stories. Mm -hmm. And that's not, coaches aren't really supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think of myself more as a guide. It's like, what if we can just feel in and notice what's happening? Mm. Such powerful words, such powerful work as well. I really get a sense of that. And I mean, I, I you know, I, I love all this stuff and I love deep diving. I, I love going deep into this topic. And I think like, where do we even begin with, with this topic? But I think where I would like to begin, if that's okay with you, is to, to talk about intimacy and to to find out what the word or what the the event or however you might define it what is intimacy to you how would you define or express intimacy i think intimacy is taking off some of the masks so like i Obviously, we knew that this was going to happen. We were going to do this. And, you know, we've been in this situation where we, a lot of us have been in lockdown. And I've let go of a lot of masks in that time of being solo. Like, I didn't have more makeup since March. And today, 
I found myself thinking, okay, oh, I'm going to be seen. Um, I better put some makeup on. Mm. And I have been online doing like Zoom things the entire time. But I still had this bit of me that said, you can't turn up as you are. And I started putting on makeup on. And I, it wasn't much. It was just a little bit of tinted moisturizer. And, a little, and I was... I just had, I had this moment where I was got, I've got a whiteboard here and I have a question up there. It says, who is this for? Mm -hmm. And it's a, just a reminder. And I could feel this layer of stuff on my skin. And I was like, who is this for? Because it doesn't feel very good to me. Mm -hmm. And why can't I just show up exactly how I am? And so <laughs> I ended up just just like washing my face and I'm so relieved because my skin feels like mine again mm -hmm. and I think that's intimacy mm. being able to sh cut, what about if we can just show up exactly as we are mm. absolutely and I, I love that you started by saying I was go you, you realized you were going to be seen and and it's that whole thing about about what does it feel like to to truly be seen and who do we let see us and how much of us do we let them see and what version of us do we let them see and all these questions which which i think come into intimacy as well but ev even in this scenario there's a level of intimacy because we're we're sharing we're connecting we're engaging and you've made some conscious choices about how you want to be seen yeah. at this time and and how you what you don't want to hide as well or cover up and it was habitual it oh. wasn't anything to do with me and the where i am right now oh. i even had a little thing about maybe i should just message anna and see what she's and it's like <laughs> what, what is going on here this, mm. um, and interesting i was with uh, somebody yesterday and they hadn't seen me since i don't know march uh, no february and they were like you look really young and fresh and good and that was less than 24 hours ago and still there's this habitual thing of like and so intimacy I think is about showing up and being accepted mm. exactly how you are and and I know that that kind of it's not, in, it's not exclusively that because the boundaries are really important. You can't just go, actually, I'm in, a, I'm in this mood and I need to do this because if I'm in interaction with another person, I need to take into account how they are. Um, but how do I stay in connection with you without losing myself? Mm -hmm. That for me is a big part of intimacy. And a lot of the work I do is around sex and intimacy. And one of the questions I ask really frequently, particularly it's around sex, it'll be like, why do you have sex? And they're like, what do you mean? Why, why do you have sex? And it's a bit of a showstopper. Mm -hmm. And it takes a bit of a digging to get to it. And it's forgotten. Mm. And I think it's about um, vulnerability. I think vulnerability is a big part. I mean, I'm a huge, I like Brené Brown is wow. just like, love, love, love. Um, but how can we develop a situation where we can be vulnerable and trust that that vulnerability is not going to be pushed back in our direction and I think that's a big part of the work that I do around gender sex and relationship diversity because we are in a society that is not kind or inclusive mm. for anybody who has not adopted the acceptable mm -hmm. and um and I think that's a barrier to intimacy mm -hmm. mm. 
That's really, I mean, there's so, so much you've already covered there in terms of trust and vulnerability and boundaries and consent, of course, is in there as well. Um, and I think, you know, we use, often intimacy is used as a euphemism, isn't it? You know, if we, do you want to get intimate? And, and as a euphemism for sex or for some sort of sexual contact or sexual act. But actually, there, there are so many opportunities in our lives to be intimate. Mm in different ways with different people in different scenarios and and those key qualities of trust and vulnerability and boundaries are kind of like these universal qualities it, it feels like that if we can suss those in our life then we're we're going to do pretty well <laughs> we're yeah. going to help us lots um, yeah. and, and yet it seems like these are issues that people can really struggle with i think they do struggle with it and they get very serious about it Oh. And I notice even in the conversation we've just been having, it got really serious. Mm. And it's like, because it's heavy and it's loaded. Mm. Like I can feel it. it's like, it's loaded. Mm. It's hard to talk about because it's like, oh, we're making it serious. We're making it about privilege and oppression and power. And it is about that. But it's like, where can we play? Mm -hmm. Can we play and have fun mm. and be childlike? And yeah. And so I think about like, so, so one of the most intimate things that I can do for me right now is share one of my sacred, secret, beautiful spots that I love going to. If like, I, and again, like notice what's happening in my body. I am, I, I've got tingles cause I'm like, and I, I've got a part of me that doesn't really want to share where it is because what I do is I, I go who is I don't want to use the word worthy so I need to think about other different words who or earned but there is some of that it's like I'm not going to show anybody my set my, my amazing places mm -hmm. but I will as a act of we're getting close and I like you and I trust you and actually do you want to get, would you want to hear a secret? Do you want to hear something special? Um, Cause I'd kind of like to take you to somewhere that's really special for me. And that I think is beautifully intimate because it's, it's showing what enlivens me. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that can be super intimate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think this is where, for me, the word, des, you know, desire and following our desire lines can be so playful because, you know, often we talk, as you say, words are so loaded and it's so difficult sometimes to, to put feelings into words and you're excellent at feeling your feelings and, you know, being able to convey that to us in a, in a like a physical embodied way as well. But I, I know for me that when I talk about desires, you know, desires for me, it, it, it's like those whispered secrets. It's like those, those things that light me up, the things that, 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 that bring color and vibrancy and energy along with them. And yet desires as well, you know, that they're something that can be very loaded and heavy. And what do you do with your desires? How do you know about your desires? Um, what if your desires aren't deemed acceptable for, for whatever reason? All these things. Yeah. And I think there's something about unspoken desires can manifest into something that is actually, it doesn't really represent the desire in the first place. I do a lot. I love people like Clarissa Pinkola Estes and um, Martin Shaw, who's just done this book called Courting the Wild, um, the Wild Twin. <gasps> if you haven't read it or listened to it, it's amazing. And it's about going, when something is hidden and not given attention or seen, it changes and grows into something that potentially is unrepresentative of the initial desire. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very, you know, like, what happens if we can ex get these out and if we can actually say these things and hear ourselves see, saying these things and have somebody witness back to what that was. Sometimes that, that even the allowing of that to happen can reveal the excitement behind the initial desire or, or actually, you know what, now I've said that I'm not really wanting that. That was an old story. Actually what I want is this, 
or somebody might respond and say, you know what, actually I've got something quite similar. And then it becomes a conversation. And so desire is really loaded because a lot of people think it's about sex. Mm. I think desire is what, you know, what are you hungry for? What catches your breath? Mm -hmm. What makes what's ever is in your pants, if you're wearing pants, <laughs> say hello. See, I've got certain words that I use, but I, you know, I know that some people are very particular about the words for our different body parts. Mm -hmm. call it, I'll call it my sex. Um, I notice now when my sex says hello to certain people mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't know what's going on, but this part of me likes it. And, and, and often it's contrary, contrary to what's going on in my head. Uh. Because I think there's a big difference between what's on the outside and what's in the inside, what's internalized, what's externalized. And I think if we can pay more attention to what's happening uh. in this, uh. um, we can start tapping into our desires rather than what we should do. Yep. Yep. So when you talk about permission to feel your feelings, mm -hmm. um, would, would you say, is that emotional feelings as well as bodily feelings and sensations? Whatever. I'm, I've realized that the more I box in, the less I can allow. Mm. Yep. Yep. So I'm like, bring it, like whatever's there, allow it. And if it, it might be really big. And what if we can create a container? Cause I'm really big on get containers and boundaries and agreements. And I'm very much of in my practice. It's like, if we can agree it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've had people that just need to scream or get really angry and other people just need to say what they believe is the unspeakable. Um, and they have really strong feelings about something, but they really are too scared to say it because it might not be safe enough to say it. So mm -hmm. I'm very much a case of um, bring it. I'll honor my boundaries. I'll say if it's too much. But I'm trying really hard to create a neutral space. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fantastic. And so, so what's, what's a starting point for somebody? Because there may be some people watching and listening to this who are thinking, yes, yes, yes. You know, I, I want to speak my truth. I, I want to feel my feelings. I want to feel lit up by my desires. I want to, to be able to notice and make choices around what gets that feeling in my pants going. pants. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what, what, what's this what's the starting place where do we begin with all of this oh there's so many and i think this is the thing right there is no one way there are so many different ways um i've got loads of different methods so i found morning pages really helpful so that's the act of basically getting a piece of paper well actually three pieces of paper um and just write in freehand anything nothing just and so it's the act of taking what's in here and bringing it outside. Mm -hmm. That can be done via drawing. So for example, I've got, I have right around me, I have lots of stuff. And this is one of the, one of the things I have. Ah. And I was asking myself, like, what are you hungry for? And then I came out with a well, look inside. And then I just started doodling. Um, you know, and I, th I put things like, can we depend on memory? I mean, I've got, I'm a bit geeky, so I put things like temporal snapshot <laughs> and memory <laughs> devices, because <laughs> I do take this to go over. But I think just even like some of the images on there, you know, I'm seeing, uh -huh. um, I've got heart, I'm looking a lot, there's a lot of eyes, uh -huh. um, there's tendrils, and just, so I find this can be really useful, and it's a really good, this is a, this in itself is a memory device. Um, I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of talking into a microphone. Um, 
there's issues around whether you can you feel comfortable you might have privacy issues so sometimes you might want to burn it or there's all those online places that are anonymous um, and also actually finding trusted people that you can speak to and I think quite a lot of the time people get confused about sexuality professionals or sex educators and people like that like oh well that's where they go to do sex stuff mm. actually, most of the time it's about speaking about the unspeakable and actually find out that oh wow those people think that oh actually I feel a lot better saying that actually this wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be um and I think that's where professionals can really help because they're a testing ground to practice with uh -huh. practice speaking practice asking for what you want and hearing what happens when you don't get like can I express what I want without it actually happening can i practice hearing no thank you mm. um so i think it's finding a way to take what's inside and bring it out mm. whether it's to another person where it's through our movement i'm a big mover <laughs> I, uh, some of it's conscious and some of it's not. <laughs> I do a lot of um, dancing and I also do TRE. So I'm trained to be a TRE practitioner because I think all these different ways of expressing things out of our bodies, I think that's where you start. Mm. Um, and finding ways, if you're with other people, understanding how the language that we use is very important to relationships and intimacy. If I'm telling you, and I'm talking in a way that's a bit pointy like that, that's not about me, it's about you. Mm -hmm. now, what if I can talk from a place of me? Um, just even that act of consciously going, okay, I'm just uh, me, me, me. Uh, what, what am I, what, how can I say this from, owning my feelings, mm. owning my desires, rather than like, you don't do this with me. It's like, do you know what? I'd really quite fancy doing this. Um, that's a biggie for me uh -huh. in dialogue with other people, mm. owning what I want rather than making it about what the other person won't do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that probably comes back to intimacy as well in terms of kind of, as you say, owning, you know, saying, this is me, this is me, I'm showing you me, I'm not projecting it onto you or I'm, I'm not trying to muddy it or, you know, whether that's consciously or subconsciously to, to make it about you, this is actually, mm -hmm. This, this is me and I'll own it and this is what I want and need or this is what I'm expressing and 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 then you as you say you can hopefully create a dialogue around that yeah and and I think if you frame it in the sense of you know particularly if there's something that you're scared of talking about that you know a, a desire that you've had for a really long time that you haven't expressed I mean it's particularly difficult if you've been with somebody or known somebody for a really long time and mm. you've got a piece of you that's quite hidden mm. um it might be, you know, it's using words like um, some things that I really want to tell you about, about me, um, that I really, I'd love you to know about me. And I'm, and, and if, and, and expressing a lot of feelings, like it might be, and I'm really scared and I'm really nervous and I'm not sure what you're going to say. <laughs> I get really northern when I get that. <laughs> but, you know, and again, I don't know how you're going to react, but I want you to know that there's things about me that I want to tell you because you matter to me. Mm. You know, even that as an entire conversation without actually getting into the thing it is, mm. can, is a beautifully intimate act. Mm. Just knowing that somebody wants to share more of themselves with you. I mean, how permission giving is that? Mm. I love that. And it doesn't have to be right now. I think that's the other thing. I think what a lot, I see a lot of people do is they vomit it out on somebody. 
and I really understand that I've done I've, I've done it I still do it uh, I try not to do it as much is is kind of express what I'm wanting to do and then gaining permission for that to happen yeah. and actually I really like keeping those separate mm. because this beautiful gift of I want to tell you more about me because I like you. It's so lovely. Mm. It reminds me of my approach to intimacy now. I've had, you know, been in situations where I've had one night stands and done things really quickly. And what I recognized over time was I love that bit. When you really want to kiss somebody and you haven't kissed them. And the whole bit of like, when's it gonna happen? That bit, I just think is amazing. Mm. I also really love the bit where you've kissed somebody, you get, and you might get naked, naked, naked with them. Because <laughs> it's degrees of nakedness. <laughs> and I'm like, and that bit of like, you know, and depending on the gender and the dynamics, it's like, when you have sex, whatever that is, I mean, I don't even know what sex means these days, um, is I love that bit before I have. I love that bit. And a lot of the time I um, resist, and I know notice the word I'm using, resist, because that's part of the thing, um, for my you know, assigned gender, is resisting and that urge to, to jump in too quickly. Because when, um, when that happens, when I do allow somebody to be that intimate with me, I quite often have feelings associated to it. And I want to be able to have a sense of intimacy with that person after the thing, whatever the thing is, has, been, has happened. And so being able to communicate that and go, actually, you know what, I really like this bit. And it might be they go, well, I don't. I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe we won't be going there then. Mm. Mm. so it, it's by I think by taking the conversation in, in a way that's sharing how you are and asking well, what's it like for you what do you like mm. it can be absolutely it can be wonderful mm. and it can also um, is a really, really great way to find clarity on the types and the level of intimacy that you're likely to have or, or both want to have, or if it's more than two people, you know, want to have, I think. Mm. Yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and I think, you know, part of all of this for me is, is about allowing ourselves to, to have those feelings of excitement and passion and pleasure and joy mm. and particularly at this time you know there's a lot of there is a lot of heaviness around and there there is a lot of, yeah it's just and and so more perhaps more now than ever or perhaps always actually allowing ourselves to to welcome these things into our lives to say you know what, what is it that lights me up what is it that brings me this excitement and joy and you know those feelings because they're very tangible those sort of like <laughs> feelings and when 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 can we have those in our lives and how can we make more space for them so I mean, <laughs> it, it feels like there's so much we could discuss <laughs> around this and, um, I, I love talking with you. Thank you so much. It's always a joy. And I, I always, um, yeah, I, I just love the way that, you, that you, you express how you're feeling about things because it helps me to kind of tap into what, what my bodily responses are and what my emotional responses are. And ultimately, you know, th those must be the foundational things. We need to know how we're feeling in order to know what we want, what we desire, where we're going to go with it who we might want to go there with and how and all of those things yeah. so thank you thank you so much and if if somebody would like to i'm sure lots of people would like to find out more about you and more about what you offer and more about your perspective and view on all of this how can they find out more more yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they can go to the feel institute um this is my it's kind of my baby it was maybe maybe a toddler now um, but I try and put more and more on there and there's lots of ways to um, contact me on there. But I like, I offer, um, I offer like 15 minutes calls just 
for anybody who wants to have a conversation with the idea of maybe we want to work together and maybe we don't. Mm -hmm. And so I like talking with people. I like hearing what people have got to say. So um, I'm very happy to get people saying, hello, I like it. Wonderful. So they can, they can find you at the Feel Institute. The Feel Institute. Dot, dot com you can find if you find it you can also i'm on facebook i think i'm on instagram as well but there's there's, there's plenty of ways to find me Lovely. and i will put a link to your website as well along with this video so people can do a quick quick click and get straight to you yeah. but thank you so much sue pleasure as yeah. always talking with you and an absolute delight and um i'm glad you chose to to be seen today and <laughs> to show up as you are because you're wonderful so thank you, thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks. Thanks very much then. And bye for now. <laughs>